Welcome to lecture three of the reproductive system. This will be discussing hormones and their interactions in the body as well as major cycles uh, specifically in the female like the ovarian and menstrual cycle. Testosterone is your major male hormone. It's produced by interstitial cells sometimes called Leydig cells that are in between the seminiferous tubules of the testes. This hormone's major function is to stimulate the reproductive organs. So this is setting up uh, what a male is in the embryo. So this is causing the formation of the male sex parts, the, the dissension of the testicles. And as a male gets older and you hit puberty and these testosterone levels begin to rise, this will underlie sex drive, sexual behaviors and characteristics, um, cause the voice to deepen, the larynx actually drops, uh, increased hair growth, body basically a facial hair growth, enlarging of the skeletal muscles. You start being able to, to put on a little muscle when you go to the weight room. Bones get thicker to support these larger muscles. So basically everything that makes a male a male. It also mediates other behaviors. Uh, higher testosterone levels is correlated with increased aggression. Now you could actually you know, make the case for the reason there are so many more males in prison than there are females uh, is directly related to this kind of makes guys uh, stupid at times. Looking at the system for males, you have the hypothalamus gland here that is going to produce a hormone, GnRH, that's gonadotropin releasing hormone. It will stimulate the anterior pituitary gland to release follicle stimulating hormone and luteinizing hormone. Now FSH is going to cause the release of a, another hormone called inhibin as well as, as, well as stimulate the spermatocytes that grow into sperm. So it's stimulating the follicles. You know, if this was a female, FSH would be stimulating the production of eggs and the male stimulating the production of sperm. Uh, luteinizing hormone will stimulate the release of our androgens like testosterone. Now as androgens go up because of LH and inhibin goes up because of F FSH, these two have a negative feedback on the hypothalamus and the pituitary gland. This prevents over secretion, too much FSH, too much LH, or too much gonadotropin releasing hormone. And the androgens, of course, do their jobs. This is going to stimulate the secondary sex characteristics of the male and final maturation of the sperm. Looking at the female side, estrogens are basically going to do the same thing for the female that uh, testosterone does for the male. This is going to mediate sexual characteristics and behavior, organs in the female. Um, all these are going to occur around the onset of puberty. You know, a lot of this occurs, of course, in embryonic development, but enlargement of the glands and breasts, the appearance of hair growth, increased fat definition beneath the skin. That's what gives women a softer appearance, I guess you would say. Uh, females can be expected to be about 25% body fat. Um, widening of the pelvis and lightening. This is kind of in preparation for childbirth and, of course, the onset of the menstrual cycle. Progesterone is another hormone, um, sometimes called the pregnancy hormone in females, produced by the corpus luteum initially, uh, but later on in pregnancy produced by the placenta. Uh, this is also a major driver uh, in the, uh, the menstrual cycle and the actual blame for PMS. Looking at the ovarian and menstrual cycles, you know, don't get too confused by this. We'll walk through these pretty slowly. This is what's happening in the ovary. A, a primary follicle, which we've discussed some in the reproductive system, I think lecture two, ovulation somewhere around day 14. So this is development of the follicle called the follicular phase. This is where the corpus luteum runs. This is the luteal phase. Now if this corpus luteum degenerates, you have menstruation. That means you are not pregnant. The sperm did not join egg. If it does not degenerate, then it produces the hormone progesterone and you maintain this new endometrial layer that you've built. And now at the same time what's going on in the ovary, what's happening down here in the uterus, is you're growing new endometrial layers, brand new blood vessels, you're preparing for the implantation of an embryo which will actually grow a placenta into this tissue, which is a very aggressive um, act. Um, you can actually consider children to be parasites. Um, you know, they attach and take away your blood supply and all your nutrients and 
usually cause sicknesses and all kinds of things. And pregnancy can be pretty rough. And then once they're born, you know, they get out and then they attach to your wallet. So they remain parasites most of their lives. If you look at the end here, the degenerating corpus luteum, you see this disappearance of these endometrial cells. And then that would be uh, during the period. You can see the phases down here. Looking at the cycle for females over 28 days, you once again have the same thing as males. You can add a tropin releasing hormone from the hypothalamus, FSH and LH from the anterior pituitary. Um, FSH is going to stimulate the growth of follicles, LH the release of estrogens. Now as these estrogen levels go up, it's going to further enhance estrogen output. So estrogen levels are going to kind of have a positive feedback effect here. If it, as it increases these high estrogen levels, this is one of the positive feedback loops in the body, um, have a effect on the pituitary right at mid-cycle, which will just increase LH and FSH. You'll have a surge. You'll see a spike in the graph where these levels go up. And these are correlated with the final maturation of the follicle as well as the release of that follicle from the ovary. So this would be the days around ovulation. That LH surge is your main thing there. Triggers ovulation. Now, after you've ovulated, those remaining follicle cells that were surrounding the oocyte become the corpus luteum. So that's another function for LH. This actually is what's forming the corpus luteum, which will maintain the pregnancy, assuming a sperm joins an egg and you have fertilization. The corpus luteum will then produce inhibin, progesterones, and estrogens. These hormones will inhibit FSH and LH, and these declining levels will end your luteal phase, and, and this will inhibit follicular development. So this is where you're, you're starting to reset the hormones back to normal and drop them down. Day 26 through 28, the corpus luteum, assuming fertilization has not occurred, will degenerate and these hormone levels will just plummet. Um, what this does is this ends the blockade. So FSH and LH can now go back up and you restart the whole system over again. You see those high progesterone levels and stuff were, were blocking or holding these down um, in the later part of the phase and inhibit and once you get rid of those, these go right back up, you restart the whole cycle over again. Let's take a look at the cycle from a pitcher standpoint. So FSH and LH are on the rise here, and this is correlating with the increased estrogens. And this is looking at the follicular phase. This is where you're growing the follicle in the ovary. This is where you're building your endometrial layer, uh, the proliferative phase uh, of the menstrual cycle. Now, right around day 14, LH, FSH go through the roof, correlated with high estrogen levels. Now, estrogen, you know, mediates sexual behaviors and characteristics. These high estrogen levels are correlated with the release of the egg. You know, see our dotted line here? Right with ovulation. This is mediating sexual behavior, so the time when you're most likely to have sexual intercourse is when estrogen levels are high. And this kind of explains teen pregnancy rates. Um, estrogen levels are peaking out, so they're more likely to want sex or want to have sex. Right around the same time, you know, they're releasing the egg. So you often hear those stories of, you know, I only had sex one time, how they get so fast. Well, guys, your body is set up to reproduce. Reproduction is that driving force of life and you are set up to produce a baby. So it's, it, it's not a shock that that one time is what got you pregnant because that one time is probably right here in this high estrogen range as well as when you're ovulating. Now as estrogen start to decline, progesterone's on the way up and that's due to the corpus luteum and that's going to start to to lower some of these guys back down. Uh, as the corpus luteum degenerates right here at the end, See progesterone levels go down. You also see FSH and LH going back up. Um, so you can follow the hormones right alongside the ovarian cycle as well as the menstrual cycle.